Hi, I'm Judy Fontana, and I'm co-captain and co-owner of Fetching Light, which is a gorgeous Hylus 46, which you are going to love to sail. It's a one-of-a-kind boat. It has taken us from Kodiak, Alaska to the North Island of New Zealand and hundreds of islands in between and wonderful adventures. Phil? My name is Phil Holland. I am the other co-captain, retired civil engineer. We purchased this boat new from Hylas. It allowed us to do a lot of customization that makes this boat unique and one of a kind and probably the best sailing Hylas 46 on the water today. By the time you're done today, you are going to love this boat as much as we do and we're going to want to sail it to the ends of the earth. Hylas is one of the few builders in the world that will make a lot of custom modifications for you. In the original and normal Hylas design, the staysail would be anchored back here. The problem with that is, is it creates too small a triangle for sail area and the sail that would be attached there would be basically a storm staysail. What I was looking for was a working staysail. So I had them move the anchor point for the staysail forward and also higher up on the mast. I now have a working staysail. It's good anywhere from between 25 to 50 knots. That's a huge sailing advantage. The next thing I'd like to point out to you is a removable bow sprit. It's a custom design. I designed it. It's the only one like it in the world. It aids tremendously in light air performance in the boat. I'll have more to say about that and actually show you how it works later on in the video. The two carbon fiber whisker poles made by Force Bar. They telescope out as long as 29 feet. I use them when we're sailing downwind. I drop the main, put the uh, large light air code zero sail out to one side and the Genoa furled out, unfurled and put out to the other side and it allows me to sail very deep angles and the boat speed is tremendous going down, downwind and the boat is very easy to steer. The hard dodger was put on as a result of having the canvas dodger that we started with have the panels blown out on three separate occasions. The dodger is constructed of stainless steel. Most dodgers you see are constructed out of fiberglass. The panels are constructed of half inch Lexan. You find very few dodgers out there that have curved panels. These panels and this dodger is rock solid. It'll take any wave that's out there. The it also has a hatch in the center there that it's opening and allows you to get ventilation either at anchor or under sail. The next thing I'd like to point out to you is the hard bimini with the solar panels mounted on top. We didn't start out with a hard bimini, we started out with the normal collapsible bimini's with the canvas tops. It wasn't very long before those were taken off the boat in heavy air. We often sail, in fact normally sail, with the enclosure panels up. It allows us to stay in the cockpit, be very comfortable, not get wet no matter if there's a squall or there's heavy air or whatever the situation may be. We rarely put on foul weather gear unless we need to go outside the cockpit. This boat is completely green, particularly under sail. We use no gen set power or dock power at all for most of the time we're out sea. The solar panels, the wind generator, and then there's also a water generator. Uh, that's a terrific advantage. These are large solar panels. They're made for commercial use. There's 340 watts and there's times when we swing the boom out like this uh, where we get nice clear exposure for the sun that uh, it powers the entire boat. The wind vane steering system. It's a Salomat 601. It's an absolute essential for any cruising boat. It, there's plenty of times where the autopilot is even broken, broke down, but this allows you to steer the boat and steers it perfectly under all conditions. The harder it blows, the better it steers. It steers better than a human being can steer. And the beauty of it is it uses no power. It's coupled directly to the uh, emergency tiller here and that eliminates all the lines into the cockpit which are normally a part of wind vane tillers. Okay. And now it's my turn to tell you all about the down below, and which is my part of the boat. One of the things that's so fantastic about this boat is it's your home. When you're out sailing as long as we were, you're not camping, this is your home. And this has all the conveniences of home. And just let me show you a few of them. 
Okay, one of the things that I really like is I've got an incredible amount of count of counter space, which you don't see on a lot of boats. There's the counter space here and over here and over here. And then this bit comes up and goes over the stove, so I even have more workspace. We have a refrigerator and a freezer, and they are both top opening and both side opening, so everything isn't always at the bottom. Lots and lots of storage space for here, here, there, storage space here, spice rack here. I've got a three burner stove with an oven. I've baked salmon in Alaska, lots of um, banana bread and coconut bread in the Pacific and smoked turkey for Thanksgiving in Mexico. So there's almost nothing that you can't do with this that you would do at home. Over here I've got two great double sinks and deep double sinks, which is something you want when you're underway um, to be able to put things in, to be able to clean things in, and I just think this is a tremendous asset. In addition, most boats, you're trying to figure out where to put the trash can, and this, practically one of the things that sold me on this one is the trash is built in. We chose to go with a flash hot water heater rather than a tank because this way we have hot water whenever we need it. The engine doesn't have to be running. We don't have to wait for it. When I'm cooking down below or when we're eating down below here, um, one really special thing about this boat is the amount of ventilation. Um, a lot of the cabins, everything is enclosed, but we've got a hatch here, a hatch here. We've got a port there. We've got two ports in here two ports back here so I can actually get a lot of air coming through uh, which certainly when you're in the Pacific is something you really really want. Here we have pull out settee which also has a lot of storage in the seat itself and that's another thing about this boat is behind the settee here lots of storage underneath the settee here storage underneath the settee there behind there all extra storage and storage in the table as well. We spent a fair amount of time in Alaska. For that trip, Phil installed this heater, which we really needed. That certainly took the chill off and made life down below really comfortable. Just moved forward from the stove or the heater into what we call the guest cabin or if we've got extra crew aboard, this is where they sleep. And this is actually a queen size bed and under and as you can see there's a lot of storage underneath it and down below here is where we have our water maker which provided us with fresh water for eight years uh, otherwise there's probably places that we couldn't have gone to unless we've been able to make our own water come way forward now and this is what i would call the guest head complete with linen closet and there's a second shower here and a shower bench. And now as we're moving really far forward, this is the sail locker. And this is unique to this Hylas. Um, we decided to forego the walk-in shower, enclosed shower, because everybody always puts their stuff in the enclosed shower anyway, and make a large sail locker where we can carry sails and tools. Okay, I've moved aft and we're now port aft and I've taken the doors off of my wonderful washing machine. And remember I told you when you're out here, you're not camping. You're living on a boat and this is your home. And so this boat comes with the Splendide washing machine, which is a front loader. And it also has a drying function. And so like when we were in Alaska, to be able to dry things and warm them up um, just made made life wonderful. We've come all the way aft in the boat to the owner's cabin. And this is where you are going to be sleeping in your full-size, queen-size bed, which you can walk around and make, unlike on a lot of the other boats where making the main bed is somewhat difficult. But this is a piece of cake. And while we're still in your cabin, on most of the Hylases, this is a vanity, and I said, I don't need a vanity. I'm out there, and I'm not going to be worried about my makeup, but what I would like is a much bigger area to put my clothing. So we had, instead of choosing the vanity, we chose much larger locker space. 
Well, having just showed you life um, at anchor, now I'm going to show you the possibilities of life underway. Now, the boat theoretically could sleep nine, although I don't think I'd ever want to do that. But what the way the boat is set up is that you have options. When you're doing long passages, depending on which tack you're on, you can choose which side of the boat you want to sleep in. And so what was the forward cabin with the queen size berth now has a pipe berth and the berth down below. Okay, here we are in the main cabin, which is set up so that you could, I suppose, have four people sleep underway or um, when you're in the dock. Um, but this mostly gives you the options of having, to picking which side you want, depending on which long tack you're on when you're doing long passages. Oh, Judy, can you keep it down? I'm the off watch and I'm trying to sleep. Oh, Phil, unique thing about this boat is the handholds. From the minute you come down the boat, you can be holding on with two hands wherever you are. And trust me, there are times when you're out there enjoying the big blue sea that you are going to need and want all of these handholds. All right, time to go to work. What I'd like to show you now is the, is the uh, mechanical and technical functions on the boat and I'm going to start with the charting functions. Uh, we have a chart table here. We chose to go with a stand-up chart table because when we analyzed the space we lost a lot of space that could otherwise use for, for storage with sit-down charting. And in, in today's world most of the charting is done electronically now. In our case the electronic charting is done using small what are known as shoebox computers. They're a, a cross between a laptop computer and a desktop computer. They have very low power, but they have all of the same components that you'd have on a normal desktop, which means that everything is interchangeable. These two computers are, are uh, about a year old, um, and they have all the same software on both computers, so they co totally back up each other. If something happens to one, you, you haven't lost your charting functions, all of your charts, everything else will be available on the other computer. We also then have a printer that's attached to it. There's lots of times out there where a printer is invaluable because when you're checking into you know foreign countries, in many cases third world countries, um, they have very um, obsessive about getting copies of all kinds of documents that you have on board. Also part of the chart table is we have your single sideband radio, your VHF radio, and your radar. And we have what's known as a radar enhancer here. That's called a CME. What that does is that makes your radar signature of your boat go from being a tiny little signature to a great big signature. We've had boats tell us when we are up in Canada that we look like a 300 foot destroyer military ship that was right uh, a quarter mile away from us. So we were very pleased to know that people could see us when we are out there. The other thing we have here is some of the systems used for monitoring the boat. This is your battery monitor here. This is a out of the solar energy industry and it's better than the marine ones because it gives you all the information on the condition of your batteries, how much they've been discharged, how many amps they've had passed through them. It gives you all the information so that at any point in time you're always aware of how and what condition the batteries are in. One other thing since I'm at it here that I'd like to show you is to have you listen only to when we start the engine. That is the sound of a pre-luber. And what that is doing is it's, a, it's an oil pump that is pumping up all of the oil passages in the engine before you start it. 90% of the wear on a diesel engine occurs during startup. So this motor has had that in it from the day one and whatever wear we've gotten on that engine has been reduced by 90% because of that. Because we have a stand-up nav table, um, a lot of our charting functions are done while you're sitting down. This uh, screen can be rotated up where you can see it from the uh, cockpit or it can be rota rotated down to where it can serve as a standard screen as you might have if you were working at a desktop at your desk at the office. And what that allows you to do is it allows you to type emails, uh, it has a wireless mouse and uh, a floppy keyboard that is virtually indestructible. 
and it stays put. It doesn't flop around or if it falls on the ground it doesn't get hurt. Hi, we're back in the aft cabin now. This is where we sleep, but it's also where the heart of the boat is. The heart of the boat is the batteries. And, the, and what we have here are industrial quality batteries. What, 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 what it got installed in this boat, and it was designed to, to accept these batteries from the very beginning, these are industrial quality batteries. These are designed for forklifts and other large pieces of equipment. They're very large and very powerful. There's th almost 1300 amp hours of, of house battery storage here, which is the equivalent to about 8D or 5 8D batteries. That's a lot of battery power. The difference is, is these batteries are vertical. And because they're vertical, they don't take up as much floor space or, or plan area space on the boat. It turns out that on boats, most of the places they put batteries is not a very good places after all. Where you want your batteries is you want your batteries right on center line and as close to the keel and as low as you can possibly get them. That's where these batteries are located. These batteries are rate, rated at 2,500 80% discharges. They've been in here now for six years and I have been unable to make any determination that they've worn or changed in their capacity at all. Okay, these batteries are a little different thanks to uh, a, a brainy little invention by the Germans, leave it to the Germans, on these water caps here. They have little float sensors in them and they're all connected. So to water these batteries, you connect this here, you turn the bottle over, and guess what? The batteries are being watered. And in a few minutes, these batteries will be fully watered. I just want to share our cockpit with you, which is incredible. It can be enclosed or it can be open. And when we were in Alaska, to be able to be in an enclosed cockpit was like being in the conservatory. It would be cold and we were in a warm, sunny spot. It was just ideal. And um, when it's raining or underway, we're warm and dry. And the other wonderful thing is, in the front, the um, forward hatch goes up. And when you're at anchor in the tropics, to have the breeze blow through is, is just um, incredible. I'm sitting in the cockpit now in about the position I normally be in when we're under sail. In front of me I have the navigation instruments, two GPS units, I have the wind speed, wind direction, boat speed, and depth information there. I also have a, um, a sonar, forward-looking sonar over there and I have a secondary backup autopilot. Those are all available from this position. In front of me here I also have the chart plotter which uh, whenever the hatch is open we can look down there and see where we are. Sail the entire boat without leaving the cockpit. All the lines are, are led to the cockpit. We have one electric winch. The electric winch is really nice. It allows us to raise the main without having to leave the cockpit. It allows us to put reefs in the main. We have three reefs. We have slab reefing. We can put reef one, two, or three in and we can do it all from the cockpit from any point of sail. We can also reef both furlers from the cockpit and we can adjust the general leads from the cockpit. Well, we've got the uh, removal bow spread attached to the bow of the boat with the code zero and the loop furler all attached. Uh, everything's ready. Uh, let's go have some fun. Let's go sailing. This is the only boat that I've seen out there that has a bow spread that is mated to a, a loop furler that is mated to the windlass capstan that allows you to manage the sail in that way. Okay, with respect to the 601 uh, sail on mat wind vane, it's highly unusual to have a wind vane steering system that's uh, set up to work with a center cockpit boat with a swim step. Those are conditions that I've simply never seen out there before. It's, it's a tremendous enhancement to sailing. It, it saves you so much power uh, on passage making. It just pays for itself right there. The wind vane system that's steering us, and it's holding a wind angle at about 60 degrees. Uh, the wind is picked up to about 16 knots and we're doing 8.7 knots. Like good numbers. 
uh, and that's what you can expect to get out of this code zero sale. We're getting to the point now when the wind gets up to 16 or 17 knots apparent where we need to strike the sail because it's good up to around 18 knots and we never stress it. So uh, we're going to take the sail down now uh, even though we've got terrific boat speed uh, and could go like this for a long time we probably would uh, take the sail down and put up the Genoa because we get just about the same boat speed when you get higher winds like this and you don't stress the, uh, the light air sail that way. Why carry a bowsprit and why have a code zero sail? Well, when you encounter 2,200 miles of single digit wind and a long passage to Hawaii, like we did from Port of Rayard to Hawaii, you'll appreciate it. Um, it's too far to motor, it's over 3,000 miles, and you can only motor 1,000. So you've got to sail that 2,000 miles somehow, some way, and get there and it will still have provisions and everything on board. And this kind of sail situation helps you uh, make that. This is a good sail plan, both upwind and downwind with the bow spread. And with the sail management system, it allows you to manage that large sail using the windlass. It's the only boat that I've ever seen that's been set up like that. And as far as I know, it's the only one in the world. Thanks for joining us today. We had a great sail and a great time sharing our boat with you and showing why it's so absolutely special and why you're going to want to see more of Fetching Light. You know, we barely touched the surface on what we have here. All I can say is this boat is the real deal and you won't be disappointed. Give us a call.